anything yet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we got a red and then we got a uh, snapper. Oh, yes, baby. Look at this. Nice snapper. So that right there is by far my biggest. Just know today that I'm fully set up for every style of fishing and I'm not gonna be wishing that I had this setup or that setup or these lures because that's the way I was last time whenever we were going after those mangrove snapper. Them clouds look pretty gnarly. Got tagged down there, right up against them rocks, right over here where Christian has been catching. That's three hits in a row. It's gotta be something small so far, but the good thing is they're not stealing any live shrimp so I ain't gotta consistently keep rebaiting so I don't mind that as long as I don't get snagged in these rocks water's a lot rougher over here on this side Go. We got him. Oh, speckled trout. Huh. Okay. I got to look at him as he came up with an open yellow mouth. So far, so good. It's fairly easy. We're just letting it drop until we feel that first thump and then slowly start twitching it back. Oh, just lost him. got him oh yes baby look at this nice snapper this is the target species that we were coming after right here <clears throat> I think we're gonna load up on them today look at that these guys taste so good too it's not much of a fillet but the one that you do get off of them is really delicious Is in the same spot that you were at. Yeah. Or using yep. Shrimp. No, using my artificial tiny shrimp. And that's what I thought was going to happen with it. Just slowly let it float down. And then you start feeling them hit it. There was a speckled trout that I had hooked, but he spit the hook on me as he came up with his mouth. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to MDLR Fishing. Today we're at the Surfside Jetty. We had an episode of Red Tide last week on Wednesday. Today is Monday, so it's been a little while. It's still in the air. You can feel it irritating your lungs, but it's nowhere near as bad. The fish are out here biting. The water is nice and clear. Hopefully we're gonna be able to take advantage of some more of those mangrove snapper. Let's see what happens. Oh man, 
these guys have got some serious pull and there's a whole mess of his buddies following him. Woo, that's what I love about the salt water. You just never know what you're truly gonna catch. And these guys. They are super strong, especially whenever they get to about 24 inches and bigger. Hold on. Great shark bait, so I hear. Don't really do too much shark fishing. I don't really like going after things that got more teeth than me. There we go, look at that mangrove snapper. Boy, he's got some pretty color on him. Yeah. That's number two, the fake shrimp. Little two and a half inch, you're too good to resist. Got that guy in there, bleeding out. That's the meat quality. It's just a little bit better. Stops the uh, bacteria that's inside the blood from doing whatever it wants to the meat. Another close look at the tiny little artificial shrimp that we're using. I mean, it's so small. It looks too good to pass up. Oh, dang, that was a massive, holy God, I was about to call him a red snapper. He looked so big. That was a huge mangrove snapper. They're right here, literally right on the rocks. There was a big one chase after my lure. Got you that time, buddy. All right, we've got quite a few. I'm just gonna let these guys go right here. A smaller variety. I don't wanna have to clean so many of those fellas. I mean, they're just living right inside the cracks of these rocks. You literally see them coming up, taking a swipe at this shrimp. Gotta make sure our leader line is still good. Got no frays or nicks in it, and we're good. Just letting it go down for about a six one thousand count or until I start feeling them nip. That's the beauty of having braid. It's instant feel, sensitivity. Doing a little double twitch to barely move it along. Make those little legs and the tail do its thing and the fish do the rest. He's a nice fat one right here. Yeah, just loading up on these guys. Woo! No, thank you. And then swells start coming in like that and it just gets downright dangerous. There ain't no way that I'm gonna go down there for an artificial lure. I don't care how much it costs. Not with those swells. They've once before when I tried to release a black drum into the water, we had swells like that. It was, uh, yeah, it was horrible. I wish the camera was rolling so that we could have used it for like lifelong lessons. I learned my lesson that day, needless to say.
This one's a big one. Gosh, man, I, oh gosh, he threw my, my shrimp. Yeah, it's, it's out fishing shrimp. It's just because I get to cast right back out there. What I'm amazed by is every time I hook one, I swear it's gonna be big. And then I'm bewildered by its size. I don't wanna clean so many little ones. He just ruined my shrimp though, finally. He ripped it. No, not on me. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, to rig it. There we go. If we get another bite, then we'll know that it's still gonna work. It's gonna be a bummer because then we're gonna have to go to a spoon or something else after a different species because all my lures that are like this are at home. That's the only tiny one that I brought. This is normally a marsh fishing setup buoyancy seven foot light i think i talked about it before but in case i didn't it's a uh, buoyancy light spinning rod old 18 outfitters and we have a 500 series shimano noski 31 pound braid but it's super thin perfect setup to do this just to cast right here you ain't got to go far and these are by far my favorite eating fish I'm just so happy that this season they have been very plentiful. Oh, look at that one. Boy, this guy came and hit it, took some drag too. All right. I'm not gonna be able to be selective much more. It's been a little while since we got a, a good bite and he's got a little bit of weight to him. So we are definitely gonna keep this one right here. Let's measure it just to see the size that we're working with. I want to say let me, maybe 10 inches. He's uh, good enough based off of past experience whenever we filleted them. Um, it'll give you one taco. Two fillets. You're making street tacos, you get two. So let's see. What are we working with as far as size goes? Now you got to keep in mind in the state of Texas. Yeah, he's uh, he's not even 10 inches. We're gonna let him go, even though he's fat. State of Texas, they don't get that big, so we're lucky we're even catching these fellas. Let it go, bro. Freaking snapping his mouth shut. <laughs> let it go, and I can let you go. Give me my hook, dude. Oh my gosh. I ain't sticking my hands in there. I need some pliers. You like to play hungry hippos with your uh, fingers. There we are. There we are. That's a nice little fighter. I'm gonna take this guy off, son. Oh, dang. You see him? He got my finger. Oh, he snapped you? Yeah, but I had a, like, my glove is on too. Yeah, I don't play with that. Oh my gosh, yeah, no. I hit him with the grips and then do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt. <laughs> I mean, they snap like. Ah, uh, it was. You know, you, you what it reminded me of when you play knuckles in school and, or thump or whatever, and you thump your knuckles. Yeah, but times ten. Thank goodness I had gloves on, y'all. That took a little while. Get fresh water. Went down there at the edge of the rocks. Got completely soaked. The uh, good thing is we've got these cleats right here at the bottom of our boots to keep us from getting washed away by those swells. So highly encourage y'all to do something like that if you're gonna want to walk them rocks but look at that oh my gosh that is a lot of tacos y'all <laughs> that's even if we do tacos who knows Power 
our break. Took care of all the fish that we're gonna be keeping for the day and everything else that we catch, it's gonna go back unless it's around 12 inches. That Yeti is literally piled full of them snapper. It's gotta be a red. Yeah, that's a red. Boy, these guys can fight in open water. They got a lot of muscle. Nice slot right there, look at him. Just gotta keep them out of them rocks, that's all. Oh, finally, finally, finally. Oh, the battery died right as I was picking this fella up, <laughs> but this dude just literally chased it down. Three times he bit, and don't worry, he's going home with us. Um, on that third and final time, he finally connected with that spoon. Boy, did he want it bad too. Yeah, 22 and three quarters of an inch. Oh, we've been going at it for a while, constantly casting a spoon and finally able to hook up with this fella right here. Woo, feels so good to be able to finally uh, bring something like that in. That's gonna do it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We're about to cook these fellas up and have just a phenomenal dinner. The cook portion is gonna go on my other channel. I'm gonna to try to revive that with a lot of cook stuff and things of that nature. But thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate your love and support. I seriously could not do this without y'all's help. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And if you wanna to help to support the work that I am doing, all you simply have to do is click that subscribe button. A lot of the gear that I use is gonna be listed in my video description down below. So click on those links. If it takes you to Amazon and you make a purchase, just know that you will be helping to support the channel in another way with a small monetary gain from Amazon. So thank you. Until next time, tight lines, y'all.